Yesterday we were looking at the current control voltage source using a MOS transistor. And a current controlled uh, voltage source, what should it do? If there is an input current I i, the output voltage must be I i times some proportionality constant which has dimensions of resistance R m. This R m is called the trans resistance or trans impedance of the amplifier. Okay. How do we realize this using negative feedback? We drive a MOS transistor with Let us say this is the output voltage V naught, V naught minus I i times R m. Okay. So, this is what drives the uh, input of the MOS transistor. What is the idea here? If the MOS transistor has infinite uh, transconductance, then the error voltage V g s must be 0 for any finite output current. So, V naught minus I i R m must be 0. So, if you do have uh, very large transconductance, then V naught will be very close to I i times R m. Okay. A very similar to every other uh, negative feedback circuit that we have derived. Okay. In the limit of infinite transconductance, there is a virtual short between gate and source and, and that is really the error in the negative feedback system and V naught will be equal to I i times R m. Okay. Of course, after that we did the analysis and found that what was the actual trans resistance R m minus 1 by G m. Okay. Maybe not the best notation here, because this R m is not the reciprocal of G m. Okay. Let me maybe change this to R f. Okay. So, R f minus 1 by G m and you can see that if G m is very large, this will be approximately R f. Okay. And a, an ideal current control voltage source must have zero input resistance and zero output resistance. What did we what did we find in our case? The input resistance that is seen by this current source, how much is that? 1 by G m and the output resistance between these two terminals, how much is that? Also, one by GM. Okay. So as usual, you don't get zero values, but you get something quite small because GM is supposed to be large to begin with. Okay. Is this fine? Now, this circuit we have already seen in uh, some other guys. That is the common source amplifier with drain feedback. Okay. So, we try to use drain feedback bias that is feedback from drain to gate okay. and we connected the load and the input source. and this has a certain g m okay, at the operating point. You can see that the incremental equivalent here is exactly same as what we are looking at with the addition of uh, R s and R l. Okay. Our current control voltage source is like this. The analysis by the way, this is these are with uh, open circuit load and no source resistance. Okay. Uh, 
RF, basically what I called RM yesterday. And this common source amplifier using drain feedback bias. This is it is a small signal picture of this circuit which I have drawn on the left side. G, but it is the same. Okay. Do these circuits look the same? Are they the same? Yes or no? What is the difference? The first of all, all that is different is I mean this is represented as a current source in parallel with the resistor, and here we have voltage source in series with the resistor. Okay. All we need to see is that I i will be minus V i by R s because of the way the polarities are chosen. Okay. So, we can go back to this circuit and use the formulas we derived earlier. Okay. This one we have already worked out in detail. Uh, V naught by V i and the resistance R in looking this way and the resistance R out looking that way. Okay. So, we have done this earlier, please go back to your notebooks and give me the expressions for these. For the common source amplifier using drain feedback bias, I want the expressions for the gain V naught by V i, uh, the input resistance R in and the output resistance R out. Okay. Yesterday, we solved it for the a current control voltage source, but with some uh, limited case where both R s and R l were infinity. Okay. We can also evaluate the general expressions, but since we all have already worked it out long back, let us use that. Okay. What do you have? is it? Minus G m R G R L plus R L. I mean this minus is here. Yeah. G m R S R L plus plus R s plus R l okay, and the input resistance R g plus R l 1 plus G m R l okay, and R out R g plus R s 1 plus G m R s. Okay. So, these are the results for the common source amplifier using drain feedback here. Now, the we know the circuit is the same except for this Thevenin Norton substitution. Okay. Now, from this we should be able to uh, get the results for the current controlled voltage source. Okay. What do we have to do? I want V naught by I i. How do I get that? Yeah. So, V i I replace that by minus I i R s. Okay. So, if I want V naught by I i, I have to multiply this whole expression by 
minus R s, right. So, it becomes that is that correct? What I had was V naught by V i, which is basically V naught by minus i i R s. Okay. So, I want only V naught by i i. So, I multiply the whole thing with minus R s. This is okay. Now, what is the value that we want for this? And also, let me change the notation from R g to R f. Okay. What is the value? What is the intended value of V naught by i i? R f. Okay. And when will it be equal to R f? Which term should dominate in the denominator? This one. Okay. So, G m R s R l, if that dominates, then obviously, you will have only the first term in the numerator divided by first term in the denominator, which is R f. Okay. Is this fine? Whereas, in the common source amplifier with uh, drain feedback bias, which was the dominant term in the denominator R f. Okay. I mean there we called it R g. So, R g is the most dominant term, what do we get? We get basically G m R l right. Okay. So, exactly the same circuit but it can be a current control voltage source or uh, behave like a common source amplifier. What happens is that if R g is very large, there is negligible feedback around the transistor. Okay. So, if R g is very large, essentially there is a division, right? the drain voltage is divided in the ratio R s by R g plus R l, uh, sorry R s by R s plus R g. Okay that fraction will be very small if R g becomes very large. So, there will be in case of the common source amplifier you do not want any feedback. Okay. So, that is why you make R g very large whereas, here feedback should be dominant. So, that is why this term has to be much larger than the others. Okay. Any questions about this? Now, R in and R out of course, these expressions still hold good because R in was evaluated between this point and ground and R out between that point and ground. Okay. And you see that if R l is infinity, this will be 1 by g m if R l is infinity and this will also be 1 by g m if R s is infinity. These were the cases we evaluated but now you know the general expressions also these things still hold good. Okay. Again this R g is really in our uh, new notation R f. Okay. Now, we have the signal picture and we also have a good understanding of uh, what it does. We have to combine it with some bias circuit. Which bias circuit will you choose? Drain feedback. It is obvious choice. In fact, I have already drawn the circuit here. Exactly the same thing will work, right? Because in this case, uh, in our circuit, we want feedback from drain to gate in the incremental picture. Drain feedback anyway has feedback from drain to gate. Okay. Also, the source is grounded, the source is grounded in drain feedback. So, this thing will work. You can also choose source feedback and then uh, ground the uh, source of the transistor using a large capacitor, okay. but uh, this is the easiest thing to use.
you complete the feedback through the resistor R F and then you couple the input source through capacitor C 1 and the load through the capacitor C 2. Okay. So, this is a current control voltage source under the right conditions basically G M R S R L must be much greater than R F. Okay. Uh, you can get the conditions from this expression, right? Both the you want G M R F to be much greater than one, and also G M R S R L to be much greater than R F and R S and R L. Okay. Yeah, you have to be louder. I can. Will we have current flowing through RF in the operating point? Certainly not, right? Because there is a capacitor here for DC. The picture just looks like that. So there is no current through RF. <laughs> But uh, for signal frequencies, again, the moment I use AC coupling, it's assumed that the signal is not at DC, right? For signal frequencies, yes, this II should flow through RF. In fact, if the GM is large enough, all of uh, II should flow through RF. Okay. How much current will flow through RS? II, the input current. There are two paths for it, right? One is to go into RS, the other one into RF. Where will most of it go? Into RF or RS? RF. Why? Least resistance between what and what? They are not in parallel to each other, right? Yeah. So, essentially, first of all, if uh, GM was infinity, this is a virtual short, right? So, you can start from there. If it is a virtual short, this voltage difference is 0 and you connect R s across it, no current flows. All of it still flows through R f. So, again I want to emphasize that that 0 input resistance is obtained because of feedback, not because of some small resistor that is stuck in there. Okay. Any questions here? So, ideally all of the signal current must flow through R f, so that you have I i times R f drop across it. Okay. In reality a little bit of it will flow through R s, that is basically equivalent to saying that the input resistance of the circuit is not 0. Okay. If it is 0, all of it would go only into the circuit, but now a part of it will go into the input sources internal resistance. Any questions? So, that completes the discussion of uh, control sources using a MOS transistor. We have uh, got the circuits for all uh, four types of control sources okay, and all of them use negative feedback. Finally, if you choose the value of uh, the GM of the transistor to be sufficiently high, what is sufficiently high? We have calculated for each case. Okay. What happens is that the input output transfer ratio, the proportionality constant between output and input does not depend on GM. Okay. It will be largely independent of GM. And also other uh, characteristics such as the input and output resistance will be what they should be for the respective current sources. Okay. For a voltage controlled voltage source, the input resistance should be high and the output resistance should be low and that will be the case if you choose a sufficiently large GM and similarly for all the other sources. Okay. And 
the preferred type of feedback or the most convenient type of feedback for uh, the first three that we discussed voltage control voltage source voltage control current source and current control current source is source feedback okay so those circuits do look more or less the same as each other with inputs and outputs taken from uh, inputs applied to different points and outputs taken from different points okay so these form the basic uh, amplifier types in fact two of them uh, the voltage control voltage source and current control current source you can also think of them as applying inputs between some terminals of the transistor and taking the output between the other two terminals so they are also called the common drain amplifier and common gate amplifier okay but there is still some difference between the common source and those two because in common source amplifier there is no feedback whereas in those two cases there is feedback okay any questions on any of this now we can also revisit uh, some control sources using the op amp you are already familiar with op amps but let's nonetheless go through it also we can look at the similarities and differences between what we did with the transistor and what we do using the op amp okay what is the model for an op amp it responds to the input difference voltage vd and it's a voltage controlled voltage source whose proportionality constant a not is very large <coughs> that's the usual model of the op amp okay this is slightly different from a transistor uh, the differences are that for a mos transistor the model is like this what differences do you see okay first of all it's a one is a voltage source the other is a current source but besides that so in case of mos transistor uh, the controlling side and control sides are shorted to each other okay and in case of the op amp this control source only one of the terminals is accessible the other one is implicitly ground okay so it's the common reference point in the circuit whereas in case of mos transistor nothing is implicitly connected to anything okay so that will lead to some uh, restrictions on what you can realize as we'll see okay so first let's try to let's try to realize a voltage control voltage source using an op amp so the output voltage must be some k times the input voltage okay and we have to do this using negative feedback so that means that first we have to define an error which will be the input voltage of the op amp we have to apply it in the right polarity so that the output voltage v not will move in the correct direction so finally when everything settles down you should get v not equals kvi and also that is also dependent on a not being infinity okay so what error voltage will you define v not by k minus vi first of all error is something that has to go to zero so this is fine but of course you don't have kvi to begin with so you have to use something like v not by k minus vi okay or vi minus v not by k okay is this okay so this is the error <coughs> and let's say this error voltage is 
positive okay what should you do to v not the error voltage is positive what should happen to v not it should decrease okay and of course if the error voltage is negative it's the other way around okay now the output of the op amp is what drives v not so let's say this is v not okay so what should be this input voltage vd v not by k minus vi i mean look at the direction in which you should move it should be the opposite of this right because if vd is positive v not will be a very large positive quantity and so on so positive value of vd will only increase v not and negative value of vd will make it go down okay so this vd must be the opposite of this quantity is this logic okay the error voltage is v not by k minus vi or uh, vi minus v not by k we have to decide which way it is we have done this before also while determining the signs of the op amp now we are just posing the problem in a slightly different way while synthesizing the circuit okay so this vd must be such that it follows this logic if v not by k minus vi is more than 0 v not must fall down okay so clearly if you make v not by k minus vi equals vd it goes in the other direction right if this is positive v not will become further positive that's not what you want so you must have vd to be equal to negative of this or vi minus v not by k is this is okay and the easiest way to because you have two terminals right uh, across which you measure vd the easiest way might be to do this you put v not you apply v not across a resistive divider to get v not by k and i have vi here so i can apply vi to one of the terminals and v not by k to the other terminal okay yes oh yeah yeah so that's fine so this is a if you see a model like this this is the static model right so when it reaches steady state this is what it is integrator model also gives you the dynamics integrator model when it reaches steady state what will be the value of a not if you have uh, let's say some constant vd okay and this is an integrator not a proportional source what will be the steady state value infinity so that just corresponds to a not equal to infinity okay yeah no it's not a single mos transistor right there is i mean i the op amp doesn't consist of a single mos transistor it has a number of uh, transistors arranged in some way it may will have capacitors and so on okay so it's not a single mos transistor if you have integration you must have some capacitor or inductor somewhere you will have that okay so you can uh, start from the integrator model and derive all the negative feedback stuff it's quite uh, coherent but it takes a long time okay if you think about what we derived for uh, negative feedback stabilization okay what is the form of the gain of the op amp it will have a finally the op amp that works the op amp that will result in a stable negative feedback system what kind of uh, gain did it have what is the form what is the form of a of s so may not by a number of poles but then also there was some restriction on where you can have the poles what was that left half plane of course that is uh, given but besides that so we had dominant pole behavior right that is one of the poles dominated the behavior of the loop gain up to the unity loop gain frequency and you could have other stuff afterwards okay 
So, or in general loop gain for a, a stable negative feedback system, it had to look like that, right? You could have other poles and zeros afterwards and so on, okay. This is the angle of L, okay. So, this is the loop gain and this is the gain of the op amp scaled by some number, okay, if you use this type of amplifier. Now, what will it be if you had an integrating function, what will it be? What will be the magnitude and phase? What is the magnet? If you have, let us say the loop gain is the form or is of the is of this form, what will be the magnitude? Huh? Slope will change where? I mean, what will be the it will have always have minus 20 dB per decade, there is no change in slope anywhere, right. And if you assume that the unity loop gain frequency here and the unity loop gain frequency that is the same, then it will look like that, okay. And what will the phase look like? What is the phase? How much is that? Minus 90, yeah, okay. So, you can see that all the stuff that we did with the negative feedback stabilization and so on does lead to something like an integrator. In fact, you would like an integrator, you cannot make it perfectly. So, it will be imperfect out here and also beyond the unity loop gain frequency where there is not significant free feedback, it is also imperfect. But you can see that the magnitude and the phase follow what the integrator does over a uh, significant range of frequencies, okay. So, you can also first of all, in fact, I usually prefer to start from the integrator, but that treatment is takes quite long. So, I did something more ad hoc here. So, you can think of the integrator as what you need for uh, negative feedback, okay, because that also builds in this uh, business of gradually building up the output, okay. So, if you have some error, then the output does not instantly reach the value that will make the error 0, okay. It will gradually build up towards that and that is what the integrator does and I think I have given this analogy of uh, driving a vehicle or adjusting some other quantity based on perception, okay. So, you have uh, you are uh, riding a vehicle and then you want to go at a certain speed, you will accelerate or uh, decelerate depending on the difference between actual and uh, uh, actual and desired speeds, okay. And that behavior is what gives you uh, integration, right. Of course, you would assume linearity and so on, so that gives you integration. And then you can say that you cannot have infinite gain at DC, so that is this imperfection. And then you also have some other uh, stuff because you end up implementing the integrator not with a single stage, but with multiple stages. So, that is why you get these extra poles, okay. So, that is one way to go about it. The other way to is to say that, hey, we want a very large DC gain. So, we have to put multiple stages and then see where the poles must be. That is what we did, okay. So, when we have multiple stages, we see that the one of the poles must be at a low frequency and all others must come beyond the unity loop gain frequency, okay. So, they are equivalent descriptions, but at least this kind of plot should convince you that uh, it should behave primarily like an integrator, okay, because if I use only this model A naught V D where A naught is a fixed number, what is the corresponding model here? What is the model for loop gain? It will be a constant, okay, with 0 phase, okay. And you can see that in uh, most of the frequency range, it is not following that. It is only in very low frequencies that it follows that, okay. This is the common model that is used for the op amp, a very high gain amplifier without any memory, but that is valid only at very, very low frequencies, whereas the integrator stuff captures a lot uh, more of the actual behavior of the op amp, okay. But it is the same. In fact, after you go through the control systems, you will see that we have taken this dominant pole type of behavior, but this is not the only way to make stable negative feedback systems. You can have stuff like this okay and so on. But when it crosses unity, it should be something like an integrator, okay. So, it can have something before, it can have something else after. So, phase also here, it you can start from some uh, large negative phase as well, but around here it should become 90 and after that it can also do something.
So, there is really no discrepancy between the integrator model and this, but uh, in fact, this is a sort of reduced model, right? This is a low frequency model of the pop up. A of s is omega u by s, omega u loop is the loop gain. So, the loop gain depends on the uh, feedback loop. So, A of s will be omega u by s, omega u is the unity gain frequency of the op amp. See, I mean when you are given an op amp, you are also given the unity gain frequency. The unity gain frequency of some arbitrary amplifier is of no significance, okay. What the, the business and the unity gain frequency and the phase at unity gain frequency that is significant for the loop gain okay when you place this in a negative feedback loop so if you take an op amp and place it in unity feedback the unity loop gain frequency will be the same as unity gain frequency of the op amp so that's why that is quoted okay otherwise it's of uh, really not much significance okay because it's only after you make the negative feedback loop that uh, the unity loop gain frequency and the phase at the unity loop gain frequency have some bearing on stability okay but when you make an op amp either in the assignment or for uh, some general purpose where people may put it in a variety of uh, feedback loops you don't want to keep on quoting the unity loop gain frequency for uh, every possible value of k right so what you do is you assume a worst case k of 1 that's what we discussed earlier so unity gain frequency is the unity uh, gain amplifier is the worst case for stability okay so you assume that people will put it there and then uh, uh, design it for uh, design it to be stable for that gain okay and if you do put it in unity feedback the loop gain will be same as the gain of the op amp so that's why the unity gain frequency is given okay. and nothing will be unconditionally stable you can take an op amp that is unity gain stable and in feedback you can also put frequency dependent components and make it unstable that is possible So, fine, I mean getting back to our op amp amplifier, if uh, V d equals V i minus V naught by k, the output will be, what should it be? It will be k times V i if uh, A naught is infinity, okay. So, this we have analyzed many times before, I do not want to go through it. What is the exact expression for V naught by V i here? It should be k, but what is it? Yeah. It is the same thing uh, written in a different way, okay. K times 1 by 1 plus uh, reciprocal of the loop gain, okay. So, this is the voltage controlled voltage source, and if A naught is infinity, there will be a virtual short between the inputs of the op amp, okay. What is the input resistance of the circuit? Or rather, let us uh, first do the easier case. What is the input resistance of this circuit? Infinity, okay. No current goes into the op amp input terminals. What is the input resistance of that circuit? 1 ohm. So, an ideal op amp, what is the input resistance? Infinity, why? So, there is a virtual short here, okay. So, there is no current through 1 ohm either. So, it is still infinity, okay. So, again that infinity comes from feedback, that is what I want to emphasize, okay. So, if you look at this model, the input of the op amp is an open circuit. So, you will say it is infinity because this is an open circuit, that is of course true. But even if this is not an open circuit, as long as the loop gain is infinity, you will still, as you can clearly see here, if you first imagine that this resistance was not there and an ideal op amp, these two are virtually shorted. Now, you connect a resistance between two virtually shorted terminals, it is not going to draw any current, okay. So, because of negative feedback, the resistance here is still infinity, okay. And you can analyze this, you can also you can analyze it for finite A naught and then take A naught equal to infinity and see what happens. Similarly, what is the output resistance? Uh, 
what will be the output resistance? Hmm? Huh? A times R, why? I mean, please do not make random guesses, work it out and see. So, you first set this V i to 0, disable that and then let us say you apply a test current I test and you have to find this voltage. Okay. Of course, you can do this for uh, finite values of A naught and then take A naught tending to infinity, but let us do it directly for the ideal op amp. What happens in an ideal op amp? What is the definition? No. No. What is an ideal op amp? Virtual short, that is all. Okay. There is no, I mean, the input and output impedance does not matter, that is what I told you, right. So, for instance, we evaluated the input resistance with 1 ohm input resistance for the op amp, it is still ideal. Ideal op amp means that it has infinite gain, so the inputs will be virtually shorted, that is all. All the other stuff is extra because we cannot get infinite gain, it is somewhat useful to have a high in input resistance and a low output resistance, but if we did have infinite gain, all that is totally irrelevant. Okay. So, what is the voltage here at this node? Huh? V t by k, where is V t in this circuit? 0, right. Okay. And this is also 0. Isn't it? Yes or no? I mean, you can uh, you can calculate it with whatever uh, you want, but let's assume the usual uh, a model of the ideal op amp. Okay, no current flows into the input and so on. It's very easy to see. Even otherwise, you will get the same answer. Okay, so this is zero volts. So this is zero. What is the current through this? What is the current in that resistor? Zero. So that current goes through that resistor. Okay. So what is this voltage? Also zero. Okay. So you apply any current you want, you will get only zero volts. So what does it mean? What is the resistance looking between the output terminals? It is zero. Okay. So you apply any current you want, you will only get zero volts. So it is zero. Now if you are getting confused by this, evaluate it for a finite value of a naught, and then uh, take the limit a naught going to infinity. That's fine. Okay. Now you could also apply a test voltage, it only kind of gets confusing that is all, but if you interpret it correctly that is fine. So, if this is V test, what should be this voltage here? It has to be V test by k and this is this still has to be 0 volts. Okay. Essentially, now you get a kind of uh, singular result, because this has infinite gain, you have a non-zero voltage across it it should be drawing infinite current. Okay. So, if you have a non-zero voltage applied to its output between this point and ground, it will draw infinite current, which again says that it is a short circuit. Okay. It is more confusing, but you can still infer the result that way, Okay, because you realize that in this case, these two cannot be virtually shorted, but if you take an ideal op amp and apply a non-zero voltage across its input, the output current has to be infinite. Right? Is that okay? So, please think about these things, we will continue from there. I think many of these things we have evaluated earlier. So, uh, ideal op amp, if it has infinite gain, the inputs will be virtually shorted to each other and you can infer everything else from that. Okay.